Welcome back to the Picky Nerds with another episode of Grading Staples. This time we're grading those spicy, spicy, colorless staples. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds, bringing you more daily content. If you like that, go over to this Patreon and support us with dollar bills. Helps us make more YouTube channels every day. And you can also go to the link in the description. TCG Player is where it takes you. Buy the cards you were going to buy anyway. And if you use the link, you help support the channel. Boom. What are we doing? Today, we're grading colorless staples. So that means we're looking at the top 30 cards from EDH Rock, most played colorless cards. And we're going to give them a grade A through F. Because give them a little rundown of what A through F is. Yes, we've already done the rundown five times, so we're not going to do it like every video. If you want to check out the, the full like minute and a half rundown, it's on the white, blue, black, red, or green staple mm -hmm. videos. But basically what we're talking about is A, auto-include, like irreplaceable. B, build around, usually the best card in your deck if you build towards it. C, cuttable, playable, fine, nothing special. D, don't bother. Probably not playing these. And F, which yep. means you just almost should never play. The easiest way to think about it is the lower the grade, the bigger the reason is that you need to play it. So if you're playing enough, just make sure you got the reasons. Yeah, sometimes you're in budget, and that changes everything about it. Not talking about CDH whatsoever. We're not talking about the competitive scene, so that will not be taken into consideration. For example, the classic is Pyroblast F. But if you're playing CDH, not enough. Yes, exactly. Uh, budget not considered. You can't really consider budget when you're talking about these, or you could there'd be, it'd be really hard to. We do. have to make a separate list. <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's hop right into it. We'll start with the first one, the most play colorless spell in all of EDH. If you didn't know, it's Soul Ring. This is the easiest A plus of my whole career. It's so good, ban worthy for how powerful it is, but yeah, it's insane. Right. I mean, there's nothing to say. Soul Ring is an A plus. It is virtually irreplaceable. I mean. There's certainly another card that I could think that it's an auto include that replaces it, but it is literally an auto include in every single commander deck, which is insane. Yeah, the fact that there is a card that goes in every commander deck in a format that diversity is insane that shows you how good this card is. Plus, it does change the outcome of the game, even if you played on turn one, and even if they team up against you, it still yes. changes everything. Exactly. Uh, next, Arcane Signet. This is a really good magic card. Uh, we got it at A minus. It's about as good as a two mana rock could ever be. It's an auto included in any non green deck. I'm putting this literally everywhere that isn't green. Yep. I mean, and if you're green artifacts, then it even goes there too. So it's like every deck without green and then some decks with green. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This this is pretty much just an auto include. It's just the best two mana rock we can get. It comes in untapped, it taps right away, it makes any color your deck wants. Yeah. All right. Next is two cards it's Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots. Uh, we have Lightning Graves at B+. Plus. It's slightly better than Swiftfoot Boots because it equips for free, and it gives, uh, well, it equips for free. Uh, Boots is a B, right up there with it. Uh, these are not auto-includes in the same way as Soul Ring and Arcane Signet, not even close. Your commander needs to take advantage of this Haste or Shroud or both, and obviously every commander is better with Haste and Shroud, but you have to factor in how useful is that? What does it actually matter when you build your deck, not every deck wants these. Yeah, you got to make sure your commander wants protecting. And not only protecting, but that you're not an Aura's deck. Because if you're an Aura's deck, you can protect it in other ways. So you just want to be sure that I want, usually when I put these in decks, I want both. I want to protect my commander and I want them to have haste. Right, with some activated ability or combat. Yes, exactly. So like Kalia of the Vast. Yeah, that's a commander that like needs Lightning Greaves would be, you know, is 10 times better. But if I'm looking at like Kogla, he just doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't need, there's no need to protect Kogla. He does something when he enters the battlefield. Right. I don't need that card to stay on the battlefield. You kill it, I'll replay it, and I'll fight something else. Right, exactly. So what is next? Uh, well, it's uh, number. It's the fifth one, and it's Solemn Simulacrum. It's just a C plus. This card is cuttable in a lot of cases. Um, I'm only playing this outside of green, and as I go up in power level, it gets cut very fast. Yeah, the um, and we can go up in power level without hitting CDH just mm -hmm. as a as a reference there. Yeah, it's a little slow. It's four mana for one ramp. Usually the the for one ramp, it's two mana. But you wouldn't pay two mana draw a card for like a 2-2. Two -two. You wouldn't really necessarily play that everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you have like two halves and it's kind of like the two bad cards mixed together is a good card. It just doesn't see play in as many decks as it used to. It used to be literally an auto include. Yeah, it just it sees play in your non-green Probably six in lower power level if yeah, you're going to put in all those decks. If you have a way to take advantage of artifacts or the creature type, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Next, we have Mindstone C, 
It's super cuttable. Usually, I only play this in like two, two one or two color decks. Yeah. Where the mana rock, where you have less mana rocks. Once you leave one or two colors, usually you're just done with Mind Stone. It's good though. I like these type of rocks. They uh, replace themselves, so that Mind Stone is never a bad draw. Some mana rocks are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're a bad draw. You don't need mana. This doesn't matter. Three mana, cantrip it right into something else. I like that a lot. And <laughs> Commander Sphere is the exact same way. It also has a C. The fact that it sacks for free might be what bumps it up to a C, because usually mana liths, three mana rocks that produce one and don't do anything else, are like F to D level. Mm -hmm. But this gives you a card always, and you can even tap it for mana and then sack it to draw a card. Yeah, exactly. This card's fine. It's not, it's not crazy. It's not great. It's cuttable in most situations. It's gonna it's gonna be passable in almost any deck you throw it in though. Yes, I think it is one of the better three mana rocks. Agreed. Three mana rocks aren't that great. Yeah, we don't want to be playing three mana rocks. Next no. is Skull Clamp. This is I, this one's so funny to me because I give it an A plus and I think it belongs as an A plus, even though it needs some build around. It doesn't matter because once you be meet the build around, this isn't just one of the best cards in the deck. It's the best card in your deck. It's one of the best cards in the format. <laughs> exactly. This card's stupidly strong. Solid A plus. It's on my to my bands. I mean, I think you could put Skull Clamp in any deck with creatures mm -hmm. and have it perform well. As soon as you have one trigger, you just play two mana to draw two. That's already good. Yeah. I just think this card is is nuts and is so above and beyond the power level of most of the cards in the format. A+. plus. Next, Feltwar Stone. It's another not quite good as Arcane Signet, but it's a really good two mana rock because it always makes rainbow. Exactly. It's just a B. Yeah, it's a B. And Feltwar Stone is, the easy, is an easy B. You just put this uh usually I put this in all my two color two and one color decks because usually you need to have uh, more rocks in those non green obviously I'm, sp I'm speaking of uh once I start to go to three colors usually you get to expand into like your, your signet category and your talisman category well it's weird because I kind of don't want this in a one color deck because it might not produce my color but if I'm in a three color deck it's going to produce at least two of my colors that's fair yeah maybe you're right about that maybe this just goes in use it how you will i mean it's a b it goes in a lot of decks because it's a two mana mana rock and that's where we want to be ramping we want to be ramping at one and two mana yes not three mana next oh speaking it's a three mana rock it's chromatic lantern a card we basically never play however it can do things it does have positive synergies with some decks so we have it at c minus but i'm emphasizing the cutability of chromatic lantern yeah I, I don't like this card very much at all i'm cutting it i cut it from every single one of my decks and i'm even close to wanting to play this card yeah you have to care somehow about the rainbow ability like send triplets probably wants this because yeah. your lands can't normally tap for black i mean red or green i mean if you i i the thing is this isn't even a budget card like you should you can take time and like just take the ten dollars you're going to spend on this card and put it into your mana base and it's going to be more effective at fixing your mana than a chromatic lantern will. yeah the problem is mana bases are so great we have the we have access to every land there's like what five lands that are banned maybe but we have every land Mana is like perfect, even if you don't, uh, even if you can't afford OG duels. Yeah, exactly. This next card is literally one of the best cards in the format. It's Mana Crypt. It's Soaring, but better, if that's even possible. Like, I, I could, it would be funny to have somebody, you know, come up to EDH and be like, yeah, Soaring's the best card in the format. And then you like show them Mana Crypt for the first time. And they're like, what? Yeah. There's another one? It's zero mana soul ring. A plus. Uh, a plus, zero mana soul ring. This card's stupid. stupid. I almost put A plus plus, but then I'm like, I don't want to go above normal grades. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have one card getting A plus plus. I mean, it would be the best. It, I mean, it is, I think it is the best card in the format. So if there is one A plus plus, it is this card. Is that what we had as the best card in the format? I'm trying to remember. Our top 15. Yeah. We did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I was like, I can't think of anything else that would be there. Next is a really cool card. It is also a account that comments on our videos. Wayfarer's Bobble <laughs> B minus. This is a nifty little artifact. I like it. I've been liking it more and more over these three mana rocks and some of this other stuff, like over Sad Robot even, I think, lately in the non-green decks. It just does its thing pretty well, so we have it to be minus. Yeah, it's really nice to have on turn one, which you do have sometimes. When you go turn one, you can use your first two turns to just get some ramp going and get yourself ahead in the game. It's nice. It's just a very just solid card. It's and nothing it's, crazy. It's cheap. It triggers all the stuff that cares about when you cast spells or artifacts. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There's nothing. There's just not much to talk about here. It gets a land out for three mana. <laughs> Next is Thought Vessel. This is just an average C. I want to care about the hand size usually for to want to play this. So yeah, some decks, you're like this card is drawing you cards. If you don't discard three, this mana rock drew you three cards. So some decks care. Most decks don't about that ability, but it's a two mana rock. It's two mana rock. In one color decks, you're going to be more likely to play this again because you're close to a freebie. Yeah, it is because one you don't the colorless isn't going to punish you in any way. 
And if you're ever going to go over seven cards in hand, then, hey, I would consider playing this one. Yeah. Uh, next, Burnish Heart. Another one that's kind of slow. It's a little slow for how EDH is gradually increasing in speed, even the casual sense. We have it at C. It's fine. It's six mana, but it's two lands. So it's like Explosive Veggies plus two mana. But it's an artifact and a creature, so you can recur it. Exactly. You, this is just goes in your... Not, it's these Most of these artifacts, again, it's just your non-green decks. These cards are very, very good um, when you're not in the colors that are good at ramping, which is green. Yes, exactly. Next is Ashnod's Altar. This card is very good. It is a B plus sack creature add two colorless mana. How many infinite loops is this part of? A million? Like so, literally? So many. Uh, yeah, but it's a B plus because it does require a lot of build around. This oh, card yeah. isn't just good on its own inherently, but I don't... I hate this card. I think... It's, it's on my like list of boring cards that just, yeah, obviously it's insane. If there's an Ashnod's Altar out, you have to kill it because there's such a high likelihood that you're just going to die to it. You do the Nim Death Mantle combos. There's the Flickering combos with like Eldrazi Displacer. It just makes infinite mana, does a little too much for what a Sack Outlet could do, and for that reason, it's just amazing. It's going to be one of the best cards in your deck, but you have to build around it. Hence, the B+. I thought you were going to say, for that reason, I'm out. For that reason, I'm out. Then you got to play the... American game show, like knife grinding on a violin sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next is Sensei's Dividing Top. This is an easy A plus. I think this card, honestly, in all senses, isn't auto included in any highly competitive deck. It's really tough not to put in your deck. It's just the filtering you get is so good. I'm not. I'm not quite there. I just haven't played it enough. But I see it always be good. I mean, I I could get behind an A plus. I think just the. It asks so little of you to just play, and it'll be good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's not any investment to playing this card. It's a one-mana artifact that is always this is a mana sink for you. That, yo, you have an extra mana laying on? Let me fix my top three. Oh, I need a good draw here? Let me fix my top three. The fact that fetches are legal in this format, and there's a ton of ways to uh, shuffle your library, makes this that much better. You get to decide, do I want to draw these cards? No, I don't want those cards. Okay, shuffle my deck. It almost gives you too many decisions. It also can't die. So there's also the... Well, I could draw the card on top right now and have it in my hand, but then Sensei's Defining Top goes on top. So I have to think about, oh, my next draw is going to be Sensei's Defining Top, and then I'm going to play it. And it's just, whoa, you're like overloaded with choices, and that just makes a really good card. Yeah, the fact that the card doesn't die is also, I, I always, I don't mention it often, but like, it's so silly. You just, you, you get, if you, you, they go to kill it, you activate and put it on top. Yep. So or in response to a board wipe, if anything happens, I still don't think Cross and Grip killing this for free is worth it no to no. play to play cross and grip i agree uh next mana vault this is just an a uh, i've come around on this card i used to think like oh you need to yeah. build around this card you don't you just don't it just gives you access to three extra mana your next turn and that'll let you cast a five drop on turn two that's already that's already enough and and then when you get to another turn later in the game where you're like okay i don't have a lot to do this turn you just untap it and then the next turn you have like nine ten mana it's like yeah geez. you can really go off with this and we were lower on the mana vaults and the grim model with this i thought they were in a separate category from like the soul ring and mana crypt but now it i mean i think they still are but it's closer than what i used to think yeah exactly i just think i think these characters are just they create these huge disparities in, in games where oh he's playing on turn five well, I drew a tap land. Exactly. Yeah. It's like I play if if they play first yeah. and they play mana vault and you go and everyone goes goes tap land, which is totally something that happens in EDH. All of a sudden he untaps and plays a five drop. That's that's silly. That's really silly. That's just like nuts. So mana vault, high power, very speedy card. Almost like a dark ritual, and then you wait for it and then you can use it again. And it has artifact synergies. Next, it's Chromox. You have to two for one yourself, but it's a zero mana. Ramper, I think this is still an A. It is, yeah, I agree. It's an A. It's just it gives it basically is a land is a way to think about it. You discard a card or exile a card from your hand, you get an extra land in play. That's that's an insane effect. Well, what becomes insane and valuable about that is once you have high card velocity and you can constantly see new cards, we're not going to be able to play all those cards. So now I can just use some of the cards in my hand to now play the rest of my cards in my hand, and I'll end up finishing the game with an empty hand and winning it's so, as opposed to having cards stuck in my hand i want to say this because we're talking about these fast mana box right now i think that like the chromax of the mana vaults the soul rings and all of that that lets you go and just drop them out super quick and then then casting a wheel is what makes wheels so good in like high power edh that's one of the feel beds for wheels exactly it's just like you can just throw out 15 mana rocks wheel and then do it again and then you're just super far ahead and yeah. nobody else everyone else just has I've seen the hands. Mountain, Soul Ring, Chromox, Wheel. 
Yeah, exactly. Like that's so goofy. Uh, what's next? It's Gilded Lotus. Um, just gave it a C minus. It's this card's fine. It's nothing crazy. It's gonna perform well when you play it. So, yeah, let's lump it in with Thran Dynamo. Also a C minus, right below it. Mm -hmm. They they get you up on mana. I think the only downside of like where they're not super appealing is you can't play them till turn four, five, six. But they are fine once they're in play. Like they're not gonna disappoint you too hard. You it's just, a lot of mana. The thing that you need to be you just want to the thing the reason these are C minuses and why I cut them so often from my deck is because you want to untap with them two or three times. And at that point, that's when you start getting enough value that you're like, okay, this was actually worth playing, but it doesn't happen often. These have big targets because everyone knows you getting three extra mana ahead is going to affect the game a lot. Yeah, it's a high investment. Soul Ring making one mana and Thrain Dynamo making three, it's just so much different. Soul Ring, I'm already up. Mm -hmm. And you can't go mana positive on an answer. But, you know, Thrain Dynamo, I might fire off a Vandal Blast on that thing for one. Yeah, exactly. Um, they're both fine. They're cuttable C minuses. Next, uh, Lotus Petal, this is a B minus. You don't put it in every deck, but the decks it's good in, it's great in. You have to be high velocity of like, you're seeing a ton of cards to be able to just pitch one for literally a mana. It sounds so bad. Like, would you discard a card to add a mana? Mm -hmm. But sometimes, actually, yeah, some decks would really want to do that. Yeah, if your storm storm count, stuff like that. There's a lot of reasons to want to play this card. Uh, your commander costs two mana. That's a reason. I mean, Yeah, do you think that this isn't up there, though, for me with the, the A's that we were talking about? Like, I, you know, there's the Moxin. And the Soul Rings and the Mana Crypts. Then there's, like, the mana that you have to untap, like, the Grim Monoliths. And then I have, like, this a little bit lower. Yeah, I have this lower, too. But it's yeah, that's why I have it at B-. It's yeah. fine. It's still good. It's definitely not a bad card at all. Um, And it's going to perform super well. I remember you played it in your uh, Skullbriar deck to play Skullbriar on turn two yeah. all the time. It was just... No, it was turn one. I would just oh, have... Oh, turn one. You know, Skullbriar is really important to get out early. And I just... I'm like, well, Lotus Petal will do that. And I wanted to try it out. It was amazing. There would be turns where I drew seven cards, and then, oh, Lotus Petal lets me cast this, and lets me cast this, and then you just go off, and it just never even mattered that I discarded a card to add one mana. It it's, was great. It's so silly. Uh, that was a Skullbriar deck. That doesn't, that doesn't care about Lotus Petal. It's not even a broken deck. Oh, no, yeah. It's just a normal, goofy deck. <laughs> yeah. Next is Eat the Fox Buzzer Fire. This is a B. Life Gain deck, Storm decks. Those are the two decks it belongs in, but it's one of the best cards in those decks. You hope to draw it, like, every time. It goes hand-in-hand -hand with Bolas of Citadel. Maybe you have it in there just for the combo. It's great. Yeah, it's really good. It's not an effect you can replace very easily. Not at all. I mean, what fifty? If you're at f above fifty life, you can just kill any player at any time. That sounds pretty nice. And you're, if you're at sixty, you're just holding the entire table hostage. Do it. Come on, do it. You always do it. You always die. Do it. You're always like, I'm not doing. I'm not negotiating. Yep. And then they kill you. Yep. But then sometimes they lose. That's fine. I'm fine with making them lose or make. And sometimes they don't do it. Sometimes so they don't do it. That's. That's where you just feel like the biggest you're like, brain. You're like, I'm not negotiating. Let's swing with everything. Like, damn it, I can't. Put and they just they just go <laughs> below fifty anyway, and then, and then Aetherflux Reservoir dies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next, Hedron Archive. I just got this a D. I don't ever want to play this really. It's fine, and it'll do its job. But everything else does its job better. Yeah, so I really like this card, but I'm fully admitting it's not very good. I mm -hmm. think I've tried it in Boros. That's where I would play it if I ever played it. One of those color combinations where you just really need some cards. Yeah. You just need to foot, fit some card draw in your deck somehow. Lower power level, I think this card's really good. Budget, you know, which is separate from what we're saying, but budget, I think this card's amazing. Yeah, I just think I just think this card has outperformed so quickly. There's so many good mana rocks nowadays that I mean, Thrain Dynamo got a C minus. You almost never have to go to four mana mana rocks. You just you don't have to stretch that high. So there's just so many twos. I mean, Arcane Signet and some of the other ones getting reprinted and being more affordable just push them out exactly um next we have sort of the animus i gave this a b plus this card is so good i just i get higher and higher in it every time i play it it just ramps so much have you had it in green decks i have had it in green decks before mm -hmm. i mean if you have creatures that attack it can snowball once you let one through you're feeling okay that's like a below rate kind of ramp but i've seen this just again and again and again and again and just get five lands out which over the course of five or six turns translates to like 30 mana yeah and, exactly. but i mean also it's an equipment so it's kind of clunky yeah exactly if it's a b plus i'm playing it in any of my really like a lot of creatures if my love the is, ground evasive too like shadow and flying yep shadow flying unblockable uh stuff like that unblockable not a keyword anymore but yeah i had it in marchesa because the assassin token who cares what happens to that it always trades with something yeah exactly there's things that you're willing to just throw away if you have creatures that are worthless just be like all right attack with my one one oh you ate it don't care Scott plus Primarily non-green decks. 
Yes, primarily on green decks. Some green decks might want this. Next, over ever flowing chalice C plus. It's fine. But there is synergies with it. It might be more of a B minus because in the decks that have synergies where you can proliferate this easily, this card's a lot better. I was gonna say B or B minus because okay. not only is it a two mana rock, which is that's the floor. If you're in late game, no other rock is gonna say, "Oh, you're gonna you need to take a turn off. You don't really have anything to do." You know, Thran Dynamo is play Thran Dynamo, leave six mana untapped, pass. This is. Play a, some kind of super rock that makes five mana now, and then pass, and then supercharge my next turn. It just gives you so many choices. You can cast it for zero if you have a storm thing going on, or you can add charge counters to it manually. I think Everflowing Chalice is sweet, yeah, maybe, especially in one or two. I'll cards. give it a B minus. Yeah, uh, B minus. Move up to B minus. It's more of a build around. Um, if you you just yeah you have you have you have to have synergies mostly with this card is where I want to be. If I can't really work with the counters. It's just a uh, okay rate, and I just better two mana rocks. But I understand what you're saying and where you're coming from. That this does do something that other rocks don't offer you. We were talking about like Thought Vessel is kind of a freebie in one colors. I think this is better than the freebie Thought Vessel. Maybe it might be. Um, just having the choice, the modal. It's this is five cards in one. That's yeah, completely fair. Next we have Whisper Silk Cloak. I gave it a C. It's cuttable in most situations. There are definitely decks that want this, though. Um, you just have to find the deck that wants it. I don't know the decks, and it, they don't, there's not many of them, but there no. are definitely some. Yeah, to me, it's just too expensive of a rate to mm -hmm. try to get this going. I think you have to be in the commander damage camp or the you're going to lose if I connect with something. Because otherwise, pushing through 10 damage just isn't worth a card like that. Exactly, yeah, that's fair. Maybe. Not, not just the card, but the time to cast it and equip it and then make sure nothing happens. And just now it has shrouds, so it can't target it. Uh, what are you doing with this? I think this is a very overplayed card. It definitely should not be 26 most played artifact in all of Commander. Yeah, that's. I haven't even talked about any of these like that. Most of them make sense, but wow. Whisper Soul Cloak at 26, huh? Yeah, exactly. I just think this card is overplayed by a mile. Um, I, you've got to find reasons to play it, and there's not a lot of reasons. I'm, it's so cuttable. Yes. All right, next is Cabal Coffers. Uh, we have this card at a B. <laughs> Uh, it's one colorless mana, and then you pay two and sack it to do nothing because Cabal Coffers is already in your hand. And then you play Cabal Coffers. I think uh, really good mono black. It's hard to have swamps, though, outside of that. This, this it's So what he's talking about is this is Exposition Map, and it gets Cabal Coffers 95% of the time. And then guys cradle the other 5%. Yeah. Which ex is even worse. Exactly. Exposition Map is is, go is, not that, is not that insane, but as long as there's broken lands that can produce like 20 mana in this format, then it's going to be even, it's going to perform really good. Yeah, it's highly dependent on what the best land in your deck is. I mean, let's pretend that we live in a world where Gaius Cradle, Cabal Coffers, Velikut, and Field of Dead are all banned. This card is worse, like considerably worse. Yeah, I mean, even, if, but uh, like getting Field of Dead is a, isn't that insane with this card. Like, that's fair. That's like a fair thing to go well, get. Well, it's fair, but it's still, it's like that's one of the best things you can be doing. Well, I'm just saying that the other ones, it's like, oh, they all produce like 17 mana. It's like yeah, those yeah. ones are real bonkers. Yeah, Expedition Map. I mean, there's also, you know, utility lands like Pajuka Bog. And if you're playing Reliquary Tower, maybe. It's as good as the, it's, it's as good as the best land in your deck is. Which is usually about to be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next, we have Darksteel Ingot. F. I'm never playing this. Literally never. Mm -hmm. You know, they printed Skyclave Relic just to make this even more embarrassing. Yeah, this card is an embarrassment. Uh, <laughs> Period. <laughs> well, I mean, you just have, I have no interest in it's three off. mana rocks. There's no flare and the indestructibility almost completely worthless. Not to mention the fact that Skyclave Relic now exists. And I think that card has been eh, okay. I need to care about the tokens in my experience. That card's way better than this. This and card I know is strictly it. better. Right. It's strictly better than this. But I'm saying this is just, there's, I think there's no reason to go to this. Poop. Soup. What about Warren Power Stone? Wow, a D minus, huh? I give it a D minus. It comes untapped. Uh, that's such a big factor to these rocks. They don't let you do anything the turn you play them, and you have you have to untap with them. And sometimes you don't. And, and, and I don't want my rocks to come untapped. Sorry. So, Gilded Lotus. It's five mana, but if you untap with it once, it pays itself back plus. Warren Power Stone is one turn. You're not paid back. Second turn, you're not paid back. Third turn, you're up one mana. But three turns to be up one mana is tough. Well, Warren Power Stone, you're up. You're up the second turn. No, you the first three? turn you play it and it does nothing. Then the oh. next turn you play it, you tap it, and you're now almost there. Then the third turn you're up. Wow, yeah, th th exactly. That's the problem with this. Guild of Lotus at least comes out and it has for three mana right away. Yeah, so you're only you've spent you're you're still two in the hole, and then next turn you're up one. Yeah, exactly. I I am not interested in War and Power Stone. Coming in tapped is the huge factor. I think this card would be totally reasonable. For, it's supposed it's fixed soul ring. Yeah. Um, this card would be reasonable if it came in untapped. It'd be very good. Uh, I think. Yeah, I agree. It's just, but it doesn't, so mm -hmm. it's bad. I think we might get that. 
I think they might give that to us. I could definitely see that coming in like a commander set. Seems reasonable. I mean, it seems it just seems good. It seems like something they would do. Yeah. And last but not least is Mox Diamond. Easy A. It's another it's just like Chrome Mox, except for this time you get rid of a land. And it goes to your graveyard so you can use it. I think it's just better. I, it it is. gets rid of a dead card guaranteed where Chrome Mox wants a live card, a spell with color identities. And Mox Diamond is just like, hey, pitch this land. Oh, you want to play Life from Low on turn one? Oh, you just pitched a land. Here you go. It's a it's a pseudo discard element. It's just so good. It's been amazing for me every Mo time. Mox Diamond is amazing. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, it's in actual they're ex these the Chrome Mox and the Mox Diamond. They're extra land drops. That's really good on for zero mana. I mean, it's work around Mox and the Mox and are banned. Yeah, exactly. So that is all uh, the top thirty. Yeah. So that's our video, and that's what we think of them. Special shout outs to every single one of our patrons we love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable if you guys would like to become a patron head over to patreon.com um and using the link in the description obviously because we put it there for you and just join us and we appreciate all the support we get your name will scroll on this little cute card we made seriously we love the support of patrons we would love to have you as a patron helps the channel we're doing this full time now so content's about to get hot and heavy also if you want to support a different way tcg player link Buy the cards through the link. You were going to buy them anyway, but now we get a kickback and it helps support the channel. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely. They know what? Stellar. Stellar. It, actually stellar. And there's a Discord. If you would like to join Discord, link in the description below. We put, There's EDH games going pretty much all the time now. Yes, we are awesome. Uh, that, that's true for sure, yeah. Tidbit. Uh, whose turn is it? Mm, it's my turn. <laughs> well, I... I mean, I don't work at my job anymore. I know I've done this before, but I'm officially not there. And I've spent my first night waking up not having to work. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. He's going to be even happier next weekend when he just doesn't have to go to work. And yeah, the problem is, is the dread. The dread gets you like, oh, I have to work Saturday. So I know my Thursday can't be super intense because then Friday, I only have one more day till I work on Saturday. But now it's like, oh, I never work. Yeah. I always do what I love. Now you have to be ready to uh, so I'll play cube on Saturdays. Yeah. I was telling my friend, uh, I'm like... Yeah, I kind of just have my dream job locked up at 24. I'm pretty fortunate for that. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting better and better because we're just going to keep producing content that is better and better, and we're not going to stop making it as See you at the top as good as we can. Like The whole goal of this is to just keep improving until we're the best. Yeah, until people just get so much help and usefulness out of our videos that they cry. Or laugh. Like, or cry. Well, they, they, I'm so, that one was so funny. <laughs> How does the bookcase do that? <laughs> very, very mentally stimulating shorts. Yeah, their shorts are not nonsense at all. No. What was the last one? Death Touch. Death Touch. Is nonsense. And overpriced cards, too. Overpriced cards. I put overpriced cardboard as a little nice, title nice, of time. Nice. All, right. all right, let's send them home. Yeah, let's send them home. Peace out, Tribe Scout. Go home. Wait, they're probably already home. Go home. They're, who watches YouTube outside their Go house? Go home. Well, maybe they're at work.